Welcome to the Fremont Opera House. My name is John Reeves. I'm a tour guide and a volunteer for 10 years, tearing out everything that's not original to the structure. And it included a large floor, which is now removed, that we will see in this great room. This building was built in 1888. Built in approximately nine months. And the reason I know that is because in 1887, the original opera house burned at the end of the year and so Fremont wanted to have an opera house so three prominent businessmen raised enough money from the Broad Street merchants to buy this piece of property. It was reported to cost at least forty to sixty thousand dollars which was a very large sum of money in those days but at the time it was built, it was the largest opera house built west of the Mississippi. This was the main hallway right here. And you would come up here and you would get your ticket out of this window right here. And then you would either go sit down or you would go into one of the front rooms and relax until the play started. Come on into the great room. When you uh, are standing across the street, and you've never been in this building, and you're looking and you're saying, boy, that's a pretty big building. But once you've been in this room, then you go across the street and you say, that's a really big building. Uh, the dome originally had a gas chandelier. Uh, later on, electricity was brought in and there was a ring of lights put around the dome up there. Now, way at the back there, on that back wall, you'll see a skinny little door which used to go all the way down to the stage and they would bring in their scenery from outside through that slot. The platforms higher up, those are called flies, that's where the stage hands stood and ran the ropes and pulleys that raised and lowered the scenery. Now the stage is pretty much original, uh, especially the flooring. Now when this was an opera house, over in the far corners, which you can't see very easily, uh, there were some trap doors. And uh, actors and actresses could go down those trap doors underneath the stage to a secret room where they would uh, change their costumes. On the front wall there, on the curved wall, there used to be a balcony all the way across and it came out approximately 20 feet with uh, side boxes you can still see on the walls uh, where the balconies were stepped down. There would have been probably two rows of seats on either side. During the 24 remodel, that was all tore off. One complete stairwell was tore out, and then a third floor was added to make better use of this giant room. If you'll notice on the walls, there are grooves or notches cut in the wall, and that was done when they put the third floor in. Uh, I spent three years tearing all of this flooring out of here so that we're back to the original structure. And back in 1976, when uh, the Pathfinder gas explosion blew up, it blew all the windows out of this building. And if you look very carefully at this wall here, you'll see a lot of scarred marks on there, and that's from the glass shards. And some of those glass shards stuck into this wall over here. I removed anything that you could reach with your hand, but up on the higher part of the wall, I left three pieces in there to show you uh, how powerful that explosion was. Okay. We are now on the fourth floor of the Opera House, also known as the Upper Balcony. The acoustics in this building, even today, are tremendous. I could throw a pebble out there on the floor and you could hear it very clearly. If you wanted to uh, sit up here in the Upper Balcony, these seats cost 10 cents. There were no chairs up here, you sat on these ledges uh, just like a stadium seating at a football game. In 2008, the board of the Fremont Opera House restructured and began raising funds with the intent of preservation. By 2011, $1.4 million was being invested in the property by renovating the main floor and shoring up the aging infrastructure. 
The board has stayed true to the history and mission of this grand old lady and looks to the day when the upper floors can bring new life back to our rich artistic tradition.